If you pursue your dreams and you fail, sure you might be a little bit more financially unstable. You might experience stress or other feelings you wish you never had to experience. But either way, even if you fail, you will end up back to where you started, which is where you are now. So what do you literally have to lose? Some of you right now, you're thinking about maybe starting a business. You have a great idea that you want to incorporate into your lifestyle. Maybe you're thinking about pursuing your dreams to the fullest. Maybe you're thinking about putting in the work to become a doctor, an engineer, a firefighter, a professional athlete. But some of you won't follow these ambitions because you're afraid. You're afraid to fail, you let the fear of failure dictate your actions, and you're afraid of what mama or papa thinks, you're afraid of what your sister, your brother thinks, or, or your grandpa, or your grandma, or your cousins, or whoever. But what truly matters is you. You are in possession of a gift. You have a talent, and whatever that talent is, you can make yourself and the people around you a stronger and better place with it. But sometimes, the only way to do that is to take a risk. At one point, you have got to take a leap if you want to make that gift that you have become a reality. Would you regret not pursuing your dreams, passions, and desires? Would you regret not living your life to the fullest? Would you regret not spending as much time with your family, friends, or loved ones? You know, Steve Jobs said in a speech one time that he used to wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and ask himself questions like this. And he said that if the answer was yes, for too many days in a row, then he knew that he had to change something. And that should go for all of us. If you're living a life that you would not be okay with losing because you weren't able to do things you wanted to do, then now you know that you need to change something. When I was 13, I had this teacher who was an absolutely amazing person. I would known him for several years then, and he had two kids, a loving wife. He was a man of God, contributed to the community. He gave us everything that he had, and he would bike to school every single day. I, I always remember him coming to school on his bike, and one morning on his way to school, it was early in the morning, he was crossing an intersection, a reckless driver comes out of nowhere, hits him, he dies on the spot, on the moment of impact. His death taught me so many valuable things in life, and one of them being that it went on to show that no matter how much you don't deserve to die, and no matter how good of a person you are, and no matter what your situation is, no matter anything, it goes to show that death is inevitable and random, and it will eventually consume each and every single one of us, whether it's in 50 years, in 10 years, next year, or even tomorrow. You cannot control it, the people around you cannot control it. As long as you're at the wrong place, at the wrong time, your whole life could disappear in the blink of an eye, along with everything you wished you could have done. Whether you're walking down the street, whether you're stepping into the elevator, whether you're walking down the stairs, whether you're, whether you're just existing. Listen, you'll see people from nowhere die of a heart attack, gone. No family history, no symptoms, no causes, nothing. It happens and that's the cruel life that we live in. And it's something that we cannot control. So what I want to make clear is that regardless of the path that you take in your life, at one point, death will consume you. It doesn't care whether you floss your teeth in the morning, whether you raise a family or not, whether you go on to be rich, poor, a success, a failure, whether, whatever, you are still going to die at one point. It is that simple. And knowing that you're going to die soon should be the biggest motivation to both make the difficult decisions in life and to get your ass out of bed in the morning. So now the question becomes, what is it that you truly have to lose? Life is too short and too unpredictable to live it. I've seen it firsthand. It is not worth it to live it safe, basic, and traditional. But do you know why most people choose to live that, that safe life over taking risks in their life? I mean, there's a pretty good argument not to. Why, why would you? Why would you take a risk that puts you through stress, puts your family through stress, makes you lose sleep, makes you lose time, makes you put in the extra work, makes you take ridiculous chances that are one to 1,000? You know, but before I even continue, the fact that I'm even sitting here and talking is astonishingly ridiculous on its own. The chance of you being born is 1 to 400 trillion. That number is so big you cannot even wrap your head around it. But okay, what, what I wanted to say was that 
The reason why people don't want to take these risks is because right now they feel like they got a lot to lose and that their current situation is relatively nice and most importantly right now they are comfortable. They got used to living basic within society standards, being with their friends every now and then, being well rested. They got comfortable. And when you get comfortable, you don't want to move. And that comfort zone, I like to call it the danger zone because th this comfort zone will persuade you to stay in there for as long as possible. And it is, I know, I know how it is. I know the comfort zone. It is so convincing. It is so hard to escape comfort. I know. And as it persuades you to stay in there, you will literally, unconsciously, see, I'm so serious when I say this, you will literally see your whole life go right by you. And the main reason that I'm serious about this now is because I am pissed off for greatness. I want to move mountains. And like Ray Lewis once said, if you're not pissed off for greatness, then you're okay with being mediocre. And I am definitely not okay with being average. And I don't think anyone should be. But anyways... To address why I'm even talking about any of this at all in the first place is because I recently got an offer to move out to Los Angeles, California to live with two other entrepreneurs as a content creator and media influencer. And it makes me sad because it's opened up my eyes to see what I truly have in store for me, what's waiting for me out there in the future. And it's just a tiny glimpse of what I'm capable of achieving within my short life. However, I doubt that I could get the right legal paperwork done in order to move to the US to work for a job such as YouTube, which is really not in control of the government. And the last thing that I want to do is to go to the US to work in a legal job as an illegal immigrant. So as of this moment, I feel like I have to pass up yet another opportunity. And it makes me feel like I just keep letting my dreams slip from my hands once more. And now that I've seen the reality of what is possible, this house in LA next to the beach on California with a huge city, great weather, and working a job that I would absolutely love and live for with people who share the exact same dream and vision, it has me thinking like, hell yeah, I would gladly die chasing this dream relentlessly then never chase it at all and play it safe and being trapped within my own mind of thinking about what my life could have been.